Good afternoon all. Another video from the modular shed, which I built myself. Now if you want to see how I built this modular shed, go to my channel, Julian's Shed Nanigans, which I'll put in the description below. And you can see every step of the process which I went through to build this shed. Now, this is my vocoder bench. And uh, today I wanted to do a little bit of work on the vocoder power supply which is this. This has 12 volts going into it. Um, it's a boost converter, so when you switch it on, it'll put out 90 volts, I think it's set to. That energizes these mains power supplies. That's 90 volts DC, but these things run on DC. Minus 12, plus 12, plus 5. And that's going to power the vocoder, which is all laid out on the vocoder bench. So I'm just fitting a bracket to uh, mount the camera on. So I need to take the uh, existing feet off this. Probably be more sense to disconnect this from the 12 volts while I do this don't want any disasters so I'm using a PZ1 screwdriver PZ1 posi drive number one now I'm not going to worry too much about the uh, placement of all this stuff I'm just going to shove it pretty much anywhere uh, and the most important thing is that this which is my distribution board I designed this to interface with this power supply particularly and, and another one that end but I think my plus 12 minus 12 and 5 volts are roughly in the order of these so if I put this nice and low down on this board then when I take this board and hang it up on the wall um, all my power cables should reach all parts of the vocoder now I need to make sure that I leave a gap in the middle here because these screws are pushing you can see it rocking there pushing through behind this uh, ply because they're not really the right length I need to leave a gap for the um, the blue button this stuff here to run up up the middle there so that's what I'm gonna do um, I'm using these little spacers to sit behind the board and then I'm just shoving a screw through I've got these screws they're quite narrow diameter but they're not quite short as I'd like and I'm just punching it through the ply and not worrying too much about precise angles this doesn't have to look beautiful right that's everything screwed down so whoops except that <laughs> so this is going to mount here and you can see I've marked some names on here so 5 is on this side so that's the 5 volt power supply uh, 12 is there so I might actually make that the plus 12 and I might make that the minus 12 because minus 12 is furthest to the left and then there's a ground there so I can I don't need this linking wire anymore I can just route two wires into here 0 and minus 12 two wires from here two wires from here because I've got multiple uh, ground or zero points along here so let's mount this on next and I get to the screw holes in this by pulling these two daughter boards out and the screw holes are actually the holes running through these blue sockets so I'll put some screws and some spacers behind that and attach it down here somewhere so my connecting block is mounted there then my distribution boards will fit in they fit opposite ways round for obvious reasons you can't have the plugs facing each other um, so all the wiring is reversed on the baseboard on this white baseboard right that's ready to go just need cables now on these three running into here uh, and a third cable high voltage DC cable running to the 5 volt supply now I'm going to need to do some soldering. I found uh, this piece of wire which I can make my third wire 
to the 5 volts. I think what I'm going to do is bring the um, TS80 iron out here. Now as I remember that's USB but it's QC3 USB. I think it's 9 volts. Now this should be, and it's been in the very damp shed, this should be uh, 12 volts to QC3 USB out. So that should work for the soldering iron. I'll put that there and go and get the soldering iron. Right, let's plug the TS80 into this thing and see if it works. Ooh, heating setting. Well, I think heating means press that one. And there it goes. Not sure what this is set to. 8.2 volts. But that should be fine. That's how this thing works. Good. I'll use that in here from now on. So the third uh, high voltage DC wire is on there. So I'll just borrow the 12 volts from the soldering iron power supply for this power supply. Get in there. Uh, switch on the high voltage and make sure all three come on. And they haven't. And I, oh, they have. Ah, maybe that one isn't quite so keen to come on at 90 volts. Uh, so this output's on. Yeah, let's turn it off. See if this one goes out first. Yes, it does, but not by much. Let's put this on again. Yeah, these come on really quickly. This one comes on later. I don't suppose that matters. I mean, I could ramp this up to, say, 100 volts. Maybe I'll do that. Right, some stranded wire. Now if I leave this box out in the shed, it will be! So I've mounted this board up at 45 degrees so I can work on it. And I'm currently wiring in the negatives and the positives for my three power supplies into my distribution board. I shall continue with that. Here's another negative. Right, that's done. So I'm going to unplug the TS80 soldering iron. Move that, put that on the floor. And then I'm going to drill um, a couple of holes in here, top and bottom, and mount it vertically up on the wall. And then I'll show when that's done. I can get rid of this uh, QC3 power supply now. Okay, here it is. It's not central in the shot because I can't quite move the camera far enough over. But here's the board. It's fitted to the uh, batten upright. So I'll try and get the camera in a better position and uh, power this up. And then I'll do some voltage measurements on these cables when they're not all tangled up with these boards. And make sure I've got my plus and minus 12 and my 5 volts. Okay, first things first, let's put the uh, 12 volts on this power supply. Like so. Oh, you can't see the display very well. Let's move in a bit closer. Oh, well, never mind about that. The important thing is that when I press this button and the output on this uh, goes from the about 12 volts at the moment because of course a boost converter can't produce less than its input it's actually saying 12.8 you may not be able to see that um, these three lights should come on so switch that on and they are all on and now I can measure some voltages right let's give this a test turn it on power supplies have come on uh, ground should be black which is there not using my glasses which is a bit daft that should be 5 volts oh it's bang on that should be minus 12 it is and that should be plus 12 and it is now that means I can plug this into a board and see what it does let's turn this off up on my power supply I'll plug it into this board which is the bar graph LED thing and it should do a little blip up when the power comes on. Oh, and it didn't. Now, why is that? Well, that seems to work if I inject a bit of mains hum into it. There should be mains around here. Yeah, there's mains in the shed. Uh, on that pin there. So, yeah, that's... Oh, what was I doing? What was I touching there? Something on this op-amp. Oh, yeah. That's making the bar graph work. Um, maybe I'll just try and get the preamp to work. I'll power that up as well and link them together and see if I can get the microphone to at least run this. But that's all I'm going to do today. So with the system on, why not? Let's pull another of these wires out. 
and this will be the 12012 for this board. Let's plug it in. Oh, power supply did something funny. Not sure why that is. Uh, I need a phono cable to link the output of the mic preamp into the bar graph unit. Oh, now that's making the bar graph um, show something, which is odd. Yeah, and that goes up with the gain control on the preamp. So something's breaking through. I don't quite know what. Uh, maybe if I plug the mic in, it'll settle down. And uh, that does seem to be better. I'll tip this up so that you can see it. So it goes completely quiet. And then when I speak, and if I speak loud, I can get uh, the upper the upper bar graph LEDs to come on. So that all looks good. I'm not going to do any audio stuff today, but I just wanted to um, make sure the power supply was working. I now have an in-shed power supply. I'll give you a last look at that, which appears to work. So I can uh, start doing some more vocoder tests soon. And a last look at the power supply, 12 volts in there, 100 volts DC here. All these three LEDs are on, minus 12 volts, plus 12 volts, plus 5 volts. So I'm pleased with that. Cheerio.